Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, that was a little loud. <laughs> I'd like to uh, have everybody take their seats. We're going to begin the program this afternoon. Um, thank you very much for coming out today. It's gorgeous out. I hope everybody got to take the boat over. I am going to introduce now Steve Corkin, the president of the Board of Trustees of the Institute of Contemporary Art. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Steve Corkin. I'm the president of the Board of Trustees of the ICA, and it is my great privilege to welcome all of you to the ICA watershed. A special welcome to Mayor Marty Walsh, to Tom Glenn of Massport, and to our state and city officials representing both our East Boston and South Boston homes the folks of the Piers Park Sailing Center, the Fallon Company across the harbor in the seaport, the great ICA staff, and the East Boston community. Welcome to all of you. What a fantastic afternoon as we gather to celebrate the opening of the watershed, a formerly condemned industrial space here in the historic Boston Harbor Shipyard and Marina. And what an extraordinary journey we've had to open this new home after opening a new space across the harbor in the seaport just over 10 years ago. We're so very honored to have you all here with us today and to be part of the work, vision, and impact of the ICA and our great commitment to art and civic life in the city, the heartbeat and lifeblood of all that we do. Many people have helped make today a reality in addition to the city and state, we want to recognize the tremendous contributions of Massport and the shipyard. Let's recognize them right now, because they're so great. <laughs> uh, each of the donors to the watershed and to the ICA's Fund for the Future, the Boston Foundation, led by Paul Grogan, the ICA Board of Trustees and Advisory Board, inaugural artist Diana Thader, who we're thrilled to have here today, and the tireless and wonderful ICA staff. Uh, now it is my distinct privilege to introduce Jill Medvedow, the Ellen Matilda Post Director of the ICA. Thank you. Good afternoon, good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be here to see all of you. Thank you all for joining us here on the podium and in the audience. We actually closed the ICA uh, across the harbor to the public so that the ICA staff could be with us, all of our staff, our volunteers, uh, our teens. And so let me start with an unbelievable, heartfelt thanks to the ICA staff for delivering this beautiful building. I have had a dream, as most of you probably know, of uh, connecting to both sides of the harbor through the arts, because of the arts' great potential to stir the soul and spark the conscience and bring people together through culture. So today is a, a great day, uh, I hope, for all of us and for the city of Boston. Uh, it's my great honor to introduce our mayor, Mayor Marty Walsh. When Mayor Walsh was first running for office, I attended a, a panel, a public panel of all the candidates, uh, where he pledged to elevate the arts in Boston, appoint a cabinet level position for the arts, and begin a planning process to ensure that the arts are part of each and every neighborhood in Boston. Check, check, check. So much of that has been accomplished, so it's a real pleasure to have the mayor with us today as we open the watershed here in East Boston. I'm thrilled to work with the mayor on public culture in our city, on ensuring that all of our teens have access to learning and enrichment in and out of school through the arts, and to help imagine a future for Boston where creativity is central to who we are. Please help me welcome our mayor. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. I want to 
It's exciting. As I walked under the tent today, you can tell a, a party's good when there's a loud noise out of there and everyone's smiling and happy. And so congratulations to everyone here today. Uh, this is an exciting day for East Boston, and it's an exciting day for the arts uh, scene in our city and our, in our Commonwealth. So I'll talk about that more in a minute. I want to thank Jill for her incredible work uh, and everyone at the ICA. I, I love the fact that uh, you shut, it, shut down the ICA today to, to allow the opportunity for all the folks that work at the ICA doing incredible work every day get a chance to celebrate here today uh, to Steve thank you Tom Glenn thank you um, to uh, um, all of the folks here Julie and, and Joyce and all of our team thank you very much for, you, for your work uh, to the elected officials here uh, you're gonna hear from them all in a little while so I won't go into a big long spiel about each one but uh, Senator about Corey thank you uh, the Adrian Madero, thank you. Representative uh, Lydia Edwards, thank you. Uh, Councilor Flynn, thank you for being here with us today. And I also want to give a shout out to former Councilor Sal Martino, who's here today. Uh, thank you, Councilor, uh, for, for all, all of you that we, what you do every day. Uh, Jill talked about the mayor's race. I, I just I saw Mike Ross here, so I had to tell this one quick story. Um, so when we're running for mayor in 2013, I'm a kid from Dorchester, and as you can imagine, I'm a world traveler and know the arts inside and out. So I really didn't I didn't I didn't need much briefing. And and, uh, and Joyce Linehan uh, was my director of policy at the time, and we we had the arts and culture committee set up, and she said, okay, what, what can you talk about the arts? And I said, well, you know. Um, you know, we have theaters in Boston, and, and the Children's Museum is great, and Medicine Wheel, and I know some stuff about the arts, and mass I knew about mass cultural, but Joyce wanted me to take a deep dive into the arts, and, and we, were we were setting up for this debate, and it was at, it was at the uh, Boston Public Library, and there was literally so many people there that they had to shut people out. You couldn't get in, into the arts and culture debate. It was, the two biggest debates was arts and culture and bicycles. Um, <laughs> So there was, there was 12 of us running, we're on the stage, and we were prepping, prepping me for it, and what to say and how, what we're going to do. And obviously creating an arts cabinet level position was, was an easy one. Um, we had said it before, and, and it was something that was really needed in Boston because it hadn't happened, we don't think, since the Flynn administration in the very early days. And we really couldn't find a plan for arts and culture that dated back any period in, in Boston's history. So we talked about that. And then I think it was Joyce or, or Kathy Bittetti might have come up with, and we came over here, we toured, we toured we toured all the arts here, the public arts outside. And uh, we, Kathy just said, they're probably going to ask you, uh, where is one of the greatest, wh wh where do you want to emulate as, as, a, as a city for arts and culture? And uh, so we had a long conversation at the table. And, and some people said Paris. And other people said, you know, or different places all over the country, all over the world. And, and um, I think Kathy said, you know what you're going to say? Say Montreal. And the reason why Montreal really has an incredible art scene and it's really progressive and people will be amazed that you did that. So now we're on the stage and we're at the debate and there's 13, 12 of us on the row and I'm down towards the end and Mike Ross is to my left and, and Mike clearly, you know, uh, stereotyped the Georgia kid that I have no idea. So Mike leans over to me and says, you know, because they asked the question, what city do you want to emulate? And, and, I, and, uh, and so as it's coming down the road, Mike leans over to me because I, I must have looked lost. And he said, you know, uh, you might want to say Paris and talk about Paris and tell me what's going on in Paris scene and what's going on in New York scene. So I said, thank you. And, and, <laughs> and so it came to Mike and Mike, Mike gives his answer. It comes to me and I said, you know, uh, there's a lot of great cities in the world that we could emulate, but I think one of the ones I think we want to emulate the most is Montreal. <laughs> and Mike Ross is looking at me going, you son of a bitch. <laughs> So thank you, Mike Ross, for that. And thank you. No, but but uh, since that time, uh, we've created, we've launched Boston Creates, uh, which which is uh, which is an arts and culture plan. Many of you in this room are part of that. I want to thank you. Uh, it, it it helps us understand unlocking the arts uh, across cultures, across generation, across all our neighborhoods in the city. And I want to thank you for that because that plan truly is amazing. Uh, and what which what we're doing in the arts, the city of Boston, you know, as we're going through, it's not a renaissance, or it hasn't been it hasn't been deemed a renaissance yet. But whatever we're going through is important. But really uh, elevating the arts and bringing and talking about the arts and making it front and center in developments at the at our table, the cabinet that we have every Friday we meet, we talk about arts and culture, we're crossing over departments, we're crossing over de people, uh, really doing a, lo a lot of different things. And we want to see the arts and culture thrive in every neighborhood. And what's happening today is the ICA Watershed does that here in East Boston. Um, I want to thank Jill and her team for the vision and the leadership here 
for a long time. They've been pioneers in bringing arts to the waterfront. Uh, as you know, over in the South Boston waterfront at the seaport, uh, that incredible, credible uh, building and, and, and what happens in that building and, and what's around that building and bringing life to the South Boston waterfront is really amazing. Uh, and, and also what we're going to see here in East Boston now is we see development and open space and parks and all the different things that are happening on the waterfront. But it's not just about the waterfront. It's about the entire East Boston community and having them have access and coming here and being able to be part of something really special. So the, the ICA is certainly transformative and inspiring. It's a testament to their, their, their countless um, creativity, their boundless creativity, excuse me, and their commitment to our neighborhoods in, in Boston. And what's amazing, this project increases access to the arts, our waterfront, our water transportation. Joyce just told me that uh, when we were walking in, Joyce Linehan uh, said that, you know, eight minutes, she, she got on the, on the shuttle, went to City Hall, uh, where did you leave out of? The ICA, left City Hall, went to the ICA, um, and then came across in eight minutes. And it is so important to make those connections because forever we're talking about transportation. And again, the arts is playing a role in transportation in our city, in our Commonwealth, and that's something that's really important. Uh, this watershed is a shining example of how much our residents stand to benefit from the resources. Uh, this project brought together a lot of partners. Uh, and, and before I bring, hand it back, to Jill, I just want to thank a few. Uh, Tom Glenn and his team at Massport, who spent a great deal uh, here uh, working with the ICA since this took, took shape. So Tom, I want to thank you and your team. Uh, Joe Fallon uh, and his staff in uh, the ferry service. I want to thank Joe and his team uh, for really excite, being excited about how do we liven up the waterfront. Um, it's great to see that this, this watershed has taken off and opened this, is, this summer. I expect the doors uh, for the arts to be open to so many, will be open for so many families, uh, for, for East, people from East Boston. And it's just another thing, as a Boston resident, it's great to see all those people that left our city, and now they're coming back saying we should never have left. So all the ones that left EC went north, sorry, it's ours. Thank you. <laughs> Next, next, it's my pleasure to introduce Tom Glenn from Massport. Tom and Andrew Hargens and the entire team, Pam and Juan, uh, have been extraordinary partners. Their receptiveness and commitment to creativity in the public realm has been extremely important to me. Uh, as well as to the project, and their great skills in navigating complexity really helped this project uh, come to life. Uh, it's, uh, we turn to them for challenges, both small and large. They always, they always helped us figure it out or figured it out for us. They introduced us to many of you here today, and they were partners in ensuring our success in opening today on time. So it's my great pleasure to invite Tom Glynn, CEO of the Massachusetts Port Authority and Massport. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the working port of East Boston. I didn't expect that to be quite the applause line. Maybe I should just sit down now and just call it quit. So I also want to um, thank Jill for hosting this great event. Uh, you know, it's a great moment in the history of East Boston, and we appreciate the ICA's hosting. But I do want to say a word about uh, a couple of people um, who are uh, responsible for the success of East Boston over the last 50 years and have had the vision that we are capitalizing on today. So the first one is Mary Ellen Welsh, who for 50 years has preserved the vision of East Boston as a gateway community. The second person I want to recognize is former Senate President Robert Travellini, who has had a vision for a bright future and has worked to deliver it year after year for 40 years. And third, to Jill, whose vision enables her to see things the rest of us miss. Many, many things that Jill sees that the rest of us miss, including a copper pipe factory, <laughs> which had not been occupied for 20 years, 
as a location for monumental artist projects. So that is, uh, that is vision par excellence. And so we're very, very fortunate in this community that Jill is here and Jill stays here and we know she's a national and international leader in the arts. And so I just wanna say how uh, joyous it was for us to work with her and how proud we are to be partnering with the mayor, with the other elected officials in East Boston and bringing something which is truly special and kind of reinforces the great success East Boston has had over the last 50 years. Thank you. Thank you. That, those were really kind words. Thank you. Uh, I know I'm speaking for the entire ICA when I say how grateful we are to the people and all of the organizations of East Boston. We have been welcomed so warmly since we began this project, spending the last year meeting so many of you and learning so much from each of you. Uh, I'm very honored to have all of uh, so many elected officials from East Boston to celebrate with us here today. Let me start. Uh, I want to introduce Senator Joseph Boncori, who's a longtime resident of Winthrop, who's devoted his careers, uh, his entire career, to helping families from East Boston to the South End, who cares desperately and is a great champion of all that we value. Senator Boncori. Wow. What a wonderful day, and thank you and welcome uh, to Jill uh, and to Steve, and uh, a big, another thanks to Jill for her vision. Uh, this port area meant so much to this community of East Boston for such a long, for such a long time, so many decades ago. And again, it's going to mean the same to a new generation of East Bostonians who live here. Uh, and that all to Jill's vision, uh, to the good work the ICA is doing, and being a great partner. Uh, and really a compliment to a city, uh, thanks to the good work that our great mayor, Marty Walsh, and the city council is doing to put a focus on arts in this city. Uh, the ICA will be a great compliment to an already thriving arts culture in this community. Um, and I want to thank Massport, too, uh, for being a great partner in all we do uh, with nonprofits throughout the city and really showing the way and enabling the ICA, who's already proven to be a great partner for the East Boston community, whether it's the East Boston Neighborhood Health Center, the East Boston Social Centers, Maverick Landing Community Center, and a great program like Zoomix. The ICA has done yeoman's work in bringing arts and culture to the watershed and to the children of East Boston, ensuring the children of East Boston have access uh, to, to arts and culture. Um, this is great to have Ed here, a uh, member on behalf of the East Boston delegation. Welcome uh, to the Southie de generate, uh, delegation. Um, this really is a great transformative project that's going to connect the city over the water. And what a novel concept. As we talk about transpor transportation infrastructure and building transportation into the 21st century, it's important that we activate and make our water, our water uh, harbor the most vibrant transportation in the entire country. And the ICA has taken the first step, and we hope we can do the same in, co in collaboration with the city and the Commonwealth. It's really a great day for East Boston and a great day for the entire city. Thank you all for being here. I hope you'll help me welcome Representative Adrian Madaro to the stage. He's a first-generation American and a lifelong resident of East Boston. Uh, been part of this since the beginning of uh, dreaming up this project. Um, and he ha shares a deep-rooted commitment to strengthening and celebrating this extraordinary community. Representative Madaro. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to East Boston. This is such an exciting day. Jill, Steve, to the board and to all the staff at the ICA, thank you for making this investment in our community. You know, this waterfront and this shipyard has evolved a number of times during East Boston's uh, lifetime. You know, when my mom was growing up in the community, this was a very active shipyard. There were longshoremen, tons of maritime industrial uses. That all dwindled, and when I was growing up, this was pretty barren and in a desolate place. There was no, there was no Pierce Park, there was no KO Pies, certainly no ICA watershed, and now here we are today with a beautiful Pierce Park, thanks to Massport, that will soon expand, almost doubling in size. We have restaurants in the shipyard, we have Harbor Arts here, and now we have the ICA. 
This is truly an incredible transformation, folks. And for those of us who are from this community, it's kind of hard to envision just how far we've come. And the wonderful thing about the ICA is this is almost a cherry on top for what is already an amazing art scene locally. We have Zoomix. We have 80 Border Street, which are beautiful artists' lofts. We have more artists' live, work, sell units that are being opened and more to come. And again, now we have the ICA watershed. And to think that East Boston has attracted a museum of this caliber is truly incredible. So again, to everyone involved, thank you for making this investment, and thank you for being part of East Boston's future. Now, before, before I end, I do want to call up Senator Boncori, because we have a little recognition from the Massachusetts legislature. Jill, please come up as well. This is from both the House and the Senate, and it reads, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts legislature offers its sincerest congratulations to the Institute of Contemporary Art in recognition of the opening of the beautiful ICA watershed, an incredible and exciting addition to the vibrant arts and cultural community of East Boston. Congratulations and thank you. unexpected. That's great. I love a good proclamation. Um, <laughs> um, there's a great story. I'll, I'll go way offline here, but uh, the great musician John Cage and the choreographer Merce Cunningham, uh, two of the great, great artists of the 20th century, were on a car trip. Uh, they were partners in working in life, and they were driving on the highway out west and speeding, speeding, speeding in their car. And they hear a siren going off behind them, and John Cage was driving, and he's an officer of the law, cop, and he pulls them over and says, I'm, you were speeding, and they're, yeah, and they were going to have to give you a citation. And John Cage, apparently, as the story goes, says, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, I hope. <laughs> Please welcome Counselor Lydia Edwards, who has spent her entire career as an advocate, an activist, and as a voice on behalf of some of the most vulnerable people and communities in our world today. Uh, such an important role and such an important voice that you bring. Thank you for being here with us. Well, good afternoon. And of course, I'll echo everyone else. Welcome to East Boston. I am incredibly honored to serve this community, though, just six months now in this role as the, as the city councilor. Um, and I just am so incredibly happy to welcome our newest neighbor, the ICA Watershed, to East Boston. Um, like any great neighbor, um, they have done an incredible amount of work to get out there and to get to know the new neighborhood. The amount of community meetings you've gone to, the amount of folks that you've reached out to coming to my office, coming to all the delegation's offices. I really think that there's a true commitment by the ICA Watershed to not just come to East Boston, but to really become a part of East Boston. So thank you for that commitment. I also wanted to note that one of the things that I'm incredibly impressed by is the fact that for the first time, the ICA watershed will be doing tours in Spanish. And that means a lot for our community as it has a growing immigrant population and not everyone speaks English as a first language. So to me, I think that further demonstrates the commitment that this is a watershed, this is a place for all to feel welcome, just like all of the city of Boston, and to assure that no matter where you come from, you can enjoy the art and truly feel welcome here. So again, thank you for adding that to our community. Thank you so much. But um, in order to just make sure that we understand that the city of Boston is not only welcoming and that we, we work really hard at the city level, I'm going to, of course, compete with my guys in the state delegation. Yeah, And I'm going to say, at the city of Boston, uh, with our great mayor, we, we've decided not only to give a citation, but to name this the ICA Watershed Day in the city of Boston. So, you get a day. Yes! Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Women rule. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah we do. Well, 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 with the mayor, too. With the mayor, too. So, 
So again, congratulations. We just wanted to give yeah, you. We give you a day. The state gave you a piece of paper. We give you a day. A day. Yeah. The city, this the city is my gave you a whole day. day. We figured as much. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. Here you okay. Go. That's true. Thank you. Well, Dave. <laughs> All right, Councillor Ed Flynn. I don't know what you're gonna do. <laughs> But I am so happy you are here uh, because you are our partner from South Boston, our Boston City Councilor Ed Flynn, and we are about connecting both sides. Councilor Flynn. Thank you to, um, to Jill and to Steve and to all the ICA staff members who made this event possible. I am honored to be here today with you as the District City Councilor of District 2. I represent the waterfront area in the ICA building across the harbor. This expansion into East Boston is a great opportunity to connect arts and residents from across the city. I want to thank Massport for their leadership. I want to thank ICA for their leadership. And I also want to thank uh, Mayor Walsh for his leadership and Joyce Linehan for her leadership as well. The ICA has been a good neighbor to the South Boston waterfront. Their generosity and focus on community is shown by their free admission to those 17 and younger and free admission on Thursday evenings and certain holidays, almost like the Children's Museum as well, so we're proud of the Children's Museum. Children from Boston Public Schools, our immigrant community, public housing from all across our city, South Boston, South End, Dorchester, Chinatown, Roxbury, and here in East Boston. It is so important that we all are given access to art and have the opportunity to be inspired, inspired by the exhibits here at the ICA. I am happy to know, know these exhibits are available for all of our great city's residents. I look forward to many young artists being inspired through visiting with their school, summer program, or family members. I am, proud, I am now proud to present a similar proclamation for myself and from Lydia Edwards and actually from all of the city council as well um, in honoring today's um, event. I look forward to working with the ICA and being inspired again uh, for, mo for many years to come. Thank you very much. I'm going to wrap it up with the, just a few closing comments. Uh, one is I think uh, everyone here knows that art uh, is about imagining the future, so it's a great honor to have with us uh, a very amazing group of individuals who have helped turn the watershed uh, into more than a space, but into something that lives and breathes and really sets us into the future. Our great artist, Diana Thader, thank you so much for your beautiful work. And our amazing architects, uh, Anmahi and Winton, and I am so happy to have that team here. Helena Briones, Aaron Brukerhoff, and Nick Winton. Please give them a great round of applause. And finally, just a, a personal note, uh, and then we'll all go to the watershed to uh, cut the ribbon and invite you inside. But uh, many of you might know that I am the daughter of a politician. Uh, for, and um, I studied art history and I grew up doing, you know, urban politics, city politics from uh, in utero till it turns out today. Um, and <laughs> it is a great thing to honor my parents uh, as I am here today opening the watershed. Thank you very much. Now, please join us to cut the ribbon. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. <laughs>